Okay, so as I said earlier, we have the conundrum of either trying to get followers as soon as possible uh, or creating content first. If we try to get followers first, well, we don't have any content to show for it, so we'll have less followers we'll get probably. So instead, if we create content to no one in particular, because we have no followers, that will then help us get more followers. So let's talk about creating content on Google+. Plus. I'm going to go back to the home screen. And back on the home screen, you'll see all the content of the accounts that you're following. So that's, what's happen that's what happens when you follow. You'll see their stuff. But that's good for you because then other people will see your stuff. Um, and here you've also got a box that says, what's new with you? You might see a, 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 a little camera. And then on the bottom right you see a pencil. So any of those ways that if you click what's new with you, you get a box to share something, post something. Or you click the pencil and you get the box to post. Either way to do it. Um, this is sharing to Google+, Plus. this is posting to Google+. Plus. So if, just taking a quick look here, so Sandra has shared this video, some videos, some links, some photos I see from work. Ralph shared this. So I seem to have followed someone that is into baking and all of that. So that stuff shows up. I see her stuff. Maybe once in a while she's got a link to go buy it. That's what I, uh, I'm going to do myself as, as well. I'm going to share content so that people can follow me. Uh, and this is the marketing. This is the, the advertising. Think about how all the big companies use social media, big and small. Let's say you know, Coca-Cola or Nike or Chipotle or uh, etc. You know, all of these companies, basically, even our college, uses social media to some degree to reach an audience. So the nuances of what to share, how to share, that's that depends on the business, but here's some advice and such. If you click what's new with you, it'll pop up here uh, that what you're about to do from your business account, uh, you're about to share. You can share either publicly, notice there's a little globe there, you, you've got publicly, you might have other options like perhaps uh, collection or circles and such. So here is where you can target your your posts. Right now if I simply choose public, everyone on Google Plus could see it. Anyone that searches or stumbles upon it could see it because it's public. I could also, if I go to see more, I can then select, okay, share this only with the chocolate lovers. This is what I was saying earlier about I'm gonna share something that I want specific people to see it, to target it specifically to people that would care most about it. Now it says you're about to share with chocolate lovers as well as, I don't know, the team members that I've delineated as part of my company. Everyone that I've put into a circle. So once I've selected that, and now it's going to be shared to more than one circle, one or more circles. Instead of sharing it publicly to everyone, which in this case is basically no one, since I have no followers, here I'm sharing it to these specific people. These people that I have connected with, I've circled them, I've followed them, and I've put them into a, uh, into a circle. They will get a notification that says, Victor's Bakery shared this with you. And the point of that is I could have more of a possibility of them than following through, clicking to buy, replying, etc. What I actually will share then, or could share, is I can share some text content. And over on Twitter, when you share something, you have 140 characters of space to share and then eventually run out of space. Here on Google Plus, you have a little bit more space where you can share something. You can share a lot. You can share a huge article directly on Google Plus. I wouldn't because a lot of social networking really is about, um, not in a bad way, but short attention spans. It's about what's going on now, what's new, what's next. And so if you write a huge um, essay, people aren't really going to look at it completely. Because there's always something new to see. 
And anyway, Google is going to um, see if I find an example. Google is going to cut off what you wrote in any way. It's going to cut off what you wrote, and then it'll say, you know, read more. Uh, so even if you write a lot, it's going to eventually cut off. So something like this, you'll see dot 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 read more. So you can write as much as you want, but it's going to cut it off, and if someone wants to read, they can click and they will read more. But try to instead, within this box, write what you want to write, and so that it fits within the first screenful. Once you go past that and, and you get further into that box, that's where you might get cut off and, and people won't see what you want to write until they read more. So you want to think in terms of social media getting people's attention for some end result. Victor's Bakery, I want to sell cupcakes on my website. I want to sell cookies on my website. I want to sell baked goods on my website. So. I have to think about what can I share about that and I can teach this and in my social networking class we talk about a lot of social networks but I can always teach how to use the tool I can't exactly teach um, how to use it for your particular gain in that a technique of what to share might not apply as well for your business so this comes with practice with uh, with your own efforts. But let's say I will share here um, uh, we're happy to finally be on Google Plus. And because I'm thinking in terms of keywords that, are, that people could be searching for and ways to entice people, I could say follow us uh, for exclusive coupons on your favorite baked goods. Again, that doesn't apply to everyone, but I'm, I'm telling you, think in terms about what can you create to entice people. Uh, so something like follow us for this, or follow along, or check us out because of that, or visit us again, you'll find this. So something that'll keep people interested enough to click the follow button. And what we can do with Google Plus is share text content. We can share pictures, links, and locations. So if I also click on the picture, I can also attach multiple pictures. I don't believe there's a limit. I, I think you can put a bunch of pictures. It'll create a, a little photo album for you. So here, just for example, I can choose to upload many pictures. It'll make an album for me. I can upload one picture. So I can take pictures. Notice once I've added a picture, I no longer have the icon to add a link. But I can still add a link if I type it up here. So I'll say subscribe to the Penguin Party newsletter. So if I have some sort of link, I can still attach it. This way I don't see a button to attach it directly. We'll see the difference about that in a bit. But here I can add a link that will become an active link once I've posted it. And so here I'm thinking in terms about writing content that is going to be interesting to people for the reason for them to follow me. I can attach a picture, I can attach a link. So I can go ahead, for example, uh, and uh, post that. Now all my zero followers would see it. Yes? And you can use some hashtags with Google Plus? We can use hashtags here too, yes. So we can put in a hashtag keyword in order for it to link to other posts related. We can definitely do that. 
So we see here now that my link has become active. That is an active clickable link. That's not a real website, but that would be an active link. All well, zero of my followers would see it, but again, we need to put some content to entice people to follow us. So that's one. I usually recommend to when we start off to post five, at least five posts on Google Plus to no one in particular, just sharing five things so that when someone so when we try to build followers and someone visits my profile it will not be a ghost town. They will see at least five things. You can do all five things right now, one thing today, a next thing tomorrow, next thing next week, whatever. I'm just saying you need to post some content before trying to get followers. You have nothing to show for it unless you do that and therefore you probably won't get followers. So I've shared one thing. I'm going to share another. This time, if I go over to link, the purpose of this is if I add an address this way, it does something cool. So, for example, I have a link off the, off the top of my head. If I add a link that is a real link on a website, what Google Plus does is it goes to look at that link and it makes sort of like a little preview snippet of it. It takes already the name of the page, its link, um, it grabs one of the pictures, you can cycle through the pictures there. If there's more than one picture on the page, you can select the picture or cancel. So if you add a link this way, it'll create a little preview of it. You can still then further add content up here and add another link. Or multiple. All of those will be active links. But none of these will get the special treatment that this one gets down here is if you use the, the link, the link icon. Notice if you use the link icon, I no longer have the ability to add a picture. I, I, long, long, I no longer have that camera. <clears throat> so from your website, I can share something into Google+. And I would also take the time to write something here. This is off topic, but I'll say check out. Okay, so this photo here, this article is, a, is about Comic-Con, San Diego Comic-Con. So I'm going to say uh, check out our Comic-Con survival guide. We give you the best tips for eating healthy. during Comic-Con. So I post that. Again, I don't have followers, no one's seeing this, but that's okay. When someone goes to my profile and thinks about following me, they'll see this. And so if, I, if, if my goal is I want to post about five things at least before I try to get followers, hopefully that gets you then thinking about different ways and different things to share. Uh, in the real world, a marketer for a real company, Coca-Cola for example, um, <clears throat> they have a team of marketers that have these various ideas about let's try this kind of ad, and let's try this one, let's try it of this length, let's try to show it at this time of day, let's try different things. Then they'll get statistics to see, okay, the 30 second ad worked the best at 9 a.m. You're going to think like that too, in terms of you're going to share different things. Perhaps not really about time-wise, but you're going to think about it. I'm going to share a picture, I'm going to share a link, some text, maybe a video. You're going to share different things. You're going to write it in different ways. You could try to share the same thing on a couple different days and write it a different way, maybe. But the thing is, that's why I'm saying share five things at least. Get the hang of it. Get, uh, get, get into the habit of sharing something and then you'll see what's a, good, what's a hit. That text post didn't do very well, but that photo post did. And the photo post with three pictures did better. So maybe that's telling me I should concentrate on adding photo posts. 
with three of them at a time. But you won't know until you try. I can further add a location. So if you've got a location, it detects locations nearby. Let's say I'm at the uh, double tree. So I've got it there. The point of this is that if you've fully set this up and you've put your address on Google Plus on that edit screen, it can uh, have you show up here. And then when you attach a uh, when you attach a uh, a location here, then someone sees that post, especially on their mobile device, they will then get a map to your location, your business's location, uh, if you share that. And when someone sees it, they see the map, they click on it, and they can get driving directions. So Google's going to help people uh, get to your business driving directions if you attach a location. Come join us for our annual cookie-thon. First ten in the door, in a snickerdoodle. Snickerdoodle. No, snickerdoodle. So, again, enticing people about everything that you post. A lot of people make the mistake when you start off as a business on social media, well, what am I going to post? and you think about sharing in a way that perhaps you share for a personal social network. Your personal social network, you've already got your friends and family connected, and you're more prone to whatever you share there will get results. Because they're your friends and family, they care about you, they're going to click like. But when you're a business here, you're usually starting from scratch. You don't have uh, followers, and the tactic that you use for personal might not work for business. So, always think in terms about keywords, enticing people, what are they going to like, perhaps? That might not be good enough. Maybe I'll also attach a picture of a tasty cookie to catch people's attention, just like this one that I've been staring at. Uh, you will share something to catch attention. At the very least, you'll get some sort of action, or at the best, you'll get a follow. So now if someone were to visit my profile, there's some stuff here, not just emptiness. There's something here that could entice people to click the follow button. Any questions so far? So let's say that uh, you're sharing content, you've posted stuff here, and then I'm looking at it and I'm like, whoops, I made, a, I made a little mistake here, I misspelled exclusive. You can go back and edit your posts to, to some degree. Uh, Twitter, you tweet something, you cannot edit it anymore. It's out there, you either have to delete it and post it again, or live with it. On Google Plus, we can edit our posts. So I can go back to my profile to see all my posts. What I can do, it's not very obvious, unfortunately, after the new Google redesign. But what you can do is if you click on an empty spot of your post, I usually like to click somewhere here between the time, somewhere here. If you click there, what happens is the post sort of opens up and then you, you see details of it, but specifically you see this three-dot menu. Uh, you see this menu, let me share something here, in, in the world of web design, people are starting to call this menu up here the hamburger menu, because it's like two buns and meat in the middle, and they're starting to call this one the kebab menu, because it's three little kebabs on a skewer. So, Good to know. yeah. There's also I saw a list of some other ones. There's some other kinds of menus with some food names, but those are the two that I remember. So definitely, people call this on the hamburger menu a lot in graphic design circles, web design circles, 
and to be really cool, that's the kebab menu. So in the kebab menu, in the three dot menu, if you click there, then you get edit post. So that hidden menu, you don't get to it unless you click on the empty spot of your post. I don't know why they don't show it on the old version of Google+, Plus. they would show it right away, but on the new version you have to click on your post, then it appears, then you can edit it. So people always make the joke that the Google engineers are great at engineering, but they're not that good at design. A lot of the stuff there is not so user-friendly or designed very nicely, but it, it's really great technology. So here's where you can edit. And the thing that I'm saying about the limitation is, if I'm going to edit this post over here that had a location attached, for example, whoops, I put the wrong location. If I go back to edit, it's only going to let me edit the text, not the location. On this post over here that I added a link, whoops, wrong link, I'm going to go back in to fix that. It only lets you edit the text, not the link. And same thing with the picture, wrong picture. I can only edit the text. So there is that limitation that the multimedia that you attach to the post cannot be further edited. You'd have to delete it, and notice you have the delete button. You'd have to delete it and post it again properly. From that menu, we also have various other things. We have pin to profile. Um, social media, they liken, it, they liken it to a hose, a fire hose, in that it's just a constant stream of water, a constant stream of content. If you're using Twitter or Google Plus or Facebook on a regular basis, you're posting new stuff, new stuff, and it's pushing the old stuff down. It's pushing the old stuff away from people's vision. Your stuff doesn't go away but when someone visits your profile and sees your, your five latest things, the other ten things you have previously shared get pushed down unless they scroll back to find it. So the fire hose is always on, it's just always spraying. And so, to help counteract that, if there's a particular post that you really want people to see right away all the time, you can select that option there for pin to profile. Once it's pinned, someone visits your profile, the first thing they will see is that post, always. You can only have one pinned post at a time, though. But anything else that I add new the rest of today, or this week, or this month, this will supersede it. If you no longer want that pinned, you can click the pin and then unpin it. If you choose something else to pin, that will take over. So what else you can see in the menu is you've got the option to disable comments, disable reshares. Everything you, you share on most social networks is public, unless you make it private unless you lock it down. And everything you share on a social network usually is public in a way that people can, can comment on it or share their own opinion on what you've written. And that's good. You want to share something, you want to share that photo of that great cupcake or that coupon or whatever, and you want other people to interact. You want, that, you want the social in social media. However, if sometimes what you need to do is activate here, disable comments. Right now anyone can come to any of my posts, click to add a comment, add, click to reply, and they can write whatever they want on my post, positive or negative. I do have the ability to delete anyone's comment on my post. If someone writes here where I'm saying something and they write something like, that's terrible advice. I can go back and I'm going to see their message there and I can click and delete it. I can delete anyone's positive or negative tweet uh, or comment. But if I've got a particular post 
that is very controversial, and I'm just getting a lot of comments on it, and it's just getting out of hand. And who knew, who knew that so many people would be upset about about that uh, about that uh, cupcake post? What I can do is disable comments, and it'll go away the option for someone to comment. They can still read it, but they can no longer comment. And I can turn it back on. So that's a way to possibly stay on topic. If people uh, are being annoying or off topic or harassing, you can turn off the comment ability on a per post basis. On your own posts, you shouldn't see mute, but on other people's posts, it might show mute. Um, deleting your own post will make it go away permanently, um, but on other people's posts, because on other people's, like Sandra's, I can click on her post as well and get the menu, and I get various options, and one is mute. What happens with mute is, Sandra shared this, and I can add a comment to her post. Then let's say someone else sees this same post and they add a comment as well. And then someone else adds another comment. Everyone that's added a comment that's been part of this post now will get a notification that says Victor's post commented on X. So everyone's part of like a chain on this post. If it's a very popular post, you're going to keep up getting updates that say someone commented on this, someone commented on this, someone commented on this. You're going to see everyone that's been active on that post. If I no longer want that because it's just too much activity, I can select mute. And I will no longer get any updates on that post to distract me. I can mute and I can unmute. So then I'll continue the, to then start to see everyone's comments on that post. I don't have mute on my own posts. Yes? Did you disable comments? Is it just for that post? Or is it for your just, just for that post. So it's not as good as it could be because it's disabled on that post. If you want all of your post disabled comments, you have to do it a little bit more uh, complex because when you share, right now I'm doing it public. So instead of going public, um, I can share it particularly, um, for example, to my circles, my connections. Now only my connections can comment. Everyone can see it, but only my connections can comment. And because I've made a connection, most likely I would want to see their comments if they comment. I, I haven't seen a way, and maybe they will add this eventually, to make all your, you know, broad strokes, to make all of them, to turn off comments for all your posts, but I haven't seen that yet. So on my own post, then I can also do disable reshares. Uh, on every post on Google+, Plus that is public, I have the pretty easy uh, ability to share a post, which means, let's say, again, I, I like Sandra's post here. What I can do is click the share button, which is this little one here. It looks like, you know, like Adam's scattering or something. Um, that, if I click share on that, what it's going to do is basically I'm going to take Sandra's post and I'm going to I'm going to send it to more people either on Twitter, Facebook, get the link, or share it on Google+. I'm going to spread her post to more people. That's sharing. On my own posts, I can disable shares. I don't want other people, I don't want people to share my post or send my post to more people. I really don't recommend that very much. That defeats the purpose of the social network. That defeats the purpose of, of perhaps going viral or, or getting a hit. Uh, or getting popular, because then you've limited your audience here. 
this has some value, of course, but usually when I do this for clients, we want we don't want to disable comments and we don't want to disable reshares. We want this to be able to spread to more people. We want to reach more of an audience. If you don't, you can click that and notice the button goes away. People can no longer share. So really lock it down, then I say disable comments. No one can comment, no one can share. And then again, to make it really locked down and private, then I share it to specific circles, only the VIP circle on Google+, turn off comments, turn off shares, and now only very specific people can see that. But I don't quite recommend using any social network that limited. For personal, great. Keep your Facebook private, keep your Google Plus private and Twitter and all of that, keep it local and private. Great for personal. But for businesses, I would recommend keep it as public as possible. That way you can uh, get as many new followers as possible. That's how you can get your message out to more people. And I'll talk about move to collections in just a bit. But uh, this is one side of the social network. I'm sharing something. It's one side of it. The other side of it is for you to give in order to get. Um, so what I mean is that what I want is I want to get comments. I want to get followers. I want to get shares. Therefore, I should give uh, comments, give follows, um, give shares, all of that. I should give if I want to get. And by that I mean, so I, I see content, I see this, I, I can then have these various actions. Every, uh, every post by default has three actions. This first one here, plus one, this one here, comment, and this one here, share. Plus one is like the like on Facebook. When you see something on Facebook that you enjoy, you've got the thumbs up, you can click like. Facebook has added more actions recently. They've added the like and like, I don't know, the sad face and <laughs> other things. They've added more actions because uh, like is not enough. So uh, Google Plus, their version of that is the plus one. A like on Google Plus is a plus one. On Twitter, it's a little heart. It used to be a star, now it's a heart. Google Plus, it's a plus one. You like something, you plus one something. And Google Plus shows you here. Two people at least have liked this, have plus one this post. Over here, 20 people have plus one it. Next to it, we have comment or reply. Sandra shared this, and then Regis replied. Um, so the comment is like a reply. Add your two cents to to uh, to that post, like this one over here. A lot of people are commenting on that one. So it's cycling through what people have said. So that's another one of the actions that you can give because I want to get comments. I want to get plus ones. When you give a plus one or a comment, you've made that account aware of you. This is one way to go around that problem about following. Every time I follow, they will get notified and I will see their stuff. But what if you don't want to follow and you still want to make people aware of you? The, the way to do that is you go to these various accounts, you search and such, and you click the like. You click the plus one. That serves the purpose of notifying Sandra that my business exists. So instead of following, you can give plus ones. At the minimum, nothing happens back. Someone sees the notification that says Victor's Bakery plus one your post. And then they move on. Uh, a higher level, that person visits my profile and sees my stuff and plus ones my stuff. That's good. A higher level to that is Someone goes to my profile after they become aware of me and comments, comments on my posts. Someone knows I exist. A higher level to that is the share. 
someone comes to my profile and sees my stuff is so amazing, they click that share button and they help me spread my word out there to more people. What if I've got two followers? One of those followers has 200. One of those followers sees my amazing picture and clicks that share button. That picture of mine now went to her 200 followers. So I've reached 202 followers. The two that I had and then the friends of friends. So I get what I give if I go in and start to share other people's posts. Some of them will reciprocate. Unfortunately, most of them won't. It's just a numbers game. That's why you want to do it as most as possible, as often as possible. You want to post stuff often, you want to like other people's stuff, you want to share it, you want to comment, you want to follow, because you're going to get that stuff back to some degree. Not one-to-one, -one, that'd be great, but not everyone is going to reply, not everyone's going to plus one, not everyone's going to follow back. You just do it on a regular basis. It's uh, playing the odds. So those are the three types of actions that you want to give and that you can get back. And the fourth action the fourth action there's these three actions. The fourth action is you're enjoying this content so much from this account that you will then click follow. That's the fourth action. 11,000 followers here. Every time Joy of Baking posts something, potentially 11,500 people see it. What's 1% of 11,500? I'm not a math major, but it's at least 100, right? So, um, possibly, at least a hundred people, the one percent, are the one that are going that are going to be most apt to buy the product, subscribe to you, follow through, call you, whatever your post is about, whatever your goal is. Maybe make that recipe themselves. So that's why you're trying to get followers. One percent of them will be the most passionate, the most active, and your content may be amazing and you're closer to 25 percent. 50%, but it's very hard to get 100%. In the beginning, people thought social media was amazing because I've got 100 followers. If I can just get $1 out of them every month, I'm going to be raking in an extra $100 income. Well, it's very hard. It's very easy for, a, for someone to click follow. Suddenly, the mouse gets much, much heavier to click buy. So the more followers you get, the more possibility of a, of a good result. So those are the four actions. I'm going to give plus ones. I'm going to give comments. I'm going to give shares. I'm going to give follows, because I will get some back. <coughs> and so this does take time. It is a full-time job, social media marketer. It's one of the many things our company does. Myself or someone else on the team, you know, we get hired by a company, we have this contract written up, what we're going to do, we're going to make your website, and we're going to do social media. That's a common package that we do. Sometimes people hire us just for blogging. We're going to write you article, uh, write articles for you, blogs. That'll help SEO. Or they hire us to do blogging and social media. So they hire us to do a variety of things, and this is one of the things that we do then with social media. We set up the accounts, we figure out which are the best ones that are going to work with a particular client. This class we're focusing on Google+. Plus. But if you take my social media class, we talk about Google+, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram. So we figure out what's the best social network or networks for a client, and then we do this. We share content. We post pictures and links and whatever. We comment on the business's behalf to other people. We try to get followers. We try to build a community. We're going for that 1% of people to be active, and then it works. I can show you the cash register for some businesses where they're a restaurant and we post something tasty on their Facebook, and then the owner can show us that week suddenly they sold more of that. It does work. 
uh, for various degrees for various businesses. But this is an avenue, this is a marketing avenue. Instead of investing in that, in that TV ad, that radio ad, the newspaper ad, that guy standing on the corner flipping the sign around really well, you could do it via social media. The investment here is time. And so Google Plus, you've got you've got this thing for free. You need a Gmail address, you set it up, and you've got a marketing platform. So that's why an early tactic is share as much original stuff of yours, five, six, seven, ten posts, then go through the process of starting to get followers by liking other people's stuff, following other accounts, commenting. Some of that will come back to you. You'll get those as well. We'll talk about other ways now to get a few more followers, but any, any uh, questions so far? Remember when we first went to plus.google.com and we saw the uh, basically the collections screen? We saw all of this stuff. To entice you to join Google Plus, what collections are is if you click on the left side here, click collections. Collections are like folders to organize your content. You can create as many collections as you want and put whatever you want into them. They're like for organizing your content. I'm a bakery, maybe I'll create a collection about cakes about cookies, about pies, about healthy alternatives, and I'm going to then put my posts in those collections. We'll see how in a moment. And the point of that is that when someone searches up here, Google Plus wants to give precedence to stuff in, or preference to stuff in collections. If it's just out there in, without any organization, meaning it's not in a collection, I'll show you here again. If I start to search pecan, Google is going to start to show me collections first, then communities, which we'll get to, then people or pages, then actual loose posts. So the point is it behooves us to think about using collections to organize our content. It's suggesting to me here a few to follow because these collections are made by people or businesses. I'm seeing Anthony Durish, I'm seeing Peggy Kay, Corina Marinescho. Everyone is sharing stuff. Uh, don't click follow yet, but if you click on the icon or the, or the name of the collection, you can see what's in it. You can see that Anthony shared this stuff about programming. He wrote open source with a bit of Microsoft stack. And he shared this one day ago, four weeks ago, four weeks ago, whatever. Um, so he's sharing stuff about programming. All right, he's sharing on a particular topic. And it seems to be working because 11,000 people follow that collection. 11,000 people. Again, 1% of that could follow through and buy you know, for, for whatever reason, he's sharing this, but he's also going to be sharing that he's, that he's for hire. So 1% perhaps is enough to, to get hired to do programming. Anthony himself, on his profile, he's only got 109 followers. So you don't have to be a success on Google Plus by building a lot of followers. You could build a lot of followers to your collections because those are in a sense independent. I can choose to follow Anthony and I will see all of his stuff, all of his collections. I'll see his programming collection, his lifestyle collection, his science collection. I'm not too interested in lifestyle, but if I click follow, I will see all of it. I can choose instead to only follow what I'm interested in. So under lifestyle, he's got 111 followers on that. Less people are interested in looking at that. A lot of people are looking, are more interested in, in uh, what's that? Two more people there, but on programming, a lot more people here are interested there. So uh, what about science? Same sort of amount. So one of his collections has become really hot, the programming collection. 
So this is what I'm saying about try different things. Look at all these collections he made. All these collections that he, that he owns, that he's made. Look at these collections that he's following as well. But he's trying different things, and the one that was a big hit was technology. Because it's got, oh, not technology, programming. Because maybe of that keyword. So our idea here is, okay, we're going to get featured collections. It says, as you use Google Plus more, it'll start to recommend to you, well, you might be interested in this content or that content. So that might be useful. You can follow, again, other people's collections to get ideas, what they're sharing, what they're posting. Not for you to steal it, but for you to put your spin on it. as you start to follow collections. Yeah, I'll go ahead and follow Anthony's programming collection as well. The owner of the collection will be able to see that you are following it, so they get the notification. Collections you follow will be displayed on your profile to people who can see the collection. So people that go to your profile will then see that you have followed this collection. So again, that, that's kind of public knowledge. So if you follow a bunch of collections, that might be embarrassing. People will see them, perhaps. So under the following tab, then it shows these are the ones that I'm following. I no longer want to follow. Well, I can click and I've unfollowed. They don't get the notification that I've unfollowed. They just get the notification that I have followed. And then we've got the tab of yours, your collections. You can create as many as you want. And I do recommend collections are pretty valuable in that you can create these organizational units for when people search, they could possibly find you. And you could perhaps get featured on the Google Plus featured screen. You don't have to be a big name on Google Plus to get featured. I'm sure there's some sort of secret algorithm that they don't share, that Google Plus doesn't tell us about, but this changes. If I refresh it, it'll show a ran another random collection here. So if you're using collections, you could be featured here, and if you've got great stuff here, you could get those follows. Retro computing, I'm seeing all of this. There's a classic v uh, VT220 terminal right there. So you're going to create your own stuff and um, put them into collections. The way we do that, just to, just to show you that, it's pretty straightforward. But if you go to yours, create collection, what would you like to name it? What kind of tagline would you like to give it, sort of explanatory? Under the collection name, you have a limited amount of space, so you can't write a huge name here, but it's a pretty good amount. And again, thinking in terms of keywords, so I'm going to create a collection called uh, Sugar Free Cookie Dreams, or Recipes, or whatever. So I'm going to share all of my sugar free cookie recipes here to this collection. Someone might search that sugar free cookie recipes on Google Plus. They could find my collection tagline. I have 80 more characters to write something. Only the best of the best recipes you can make at home. And with your collections, you have some customization here about who can see it. Again, the default is public, which is the one I recommend. But you can change this to your circles, meaning only those that you have connected with can see this collection. It's a little more private. And then we've got only you. Only you, anywhere on Google+, Plus, can see what's in here. No one else. However, if you change any of these, set any of these, once set, this can't be changed. This can't be changed. No one else can further see. Um, you can no longer put this back to public if you set it to a certain certain circle. 
if you go to custom you can target it here only let one certain circle see it only let a certain circle see it or only let certain people see it. You can go that specific. Only these three people on Google Plus. Only these three people in all of Google Plus can see it. Once I click Create, then I've got a little bit of customization. I can click the picture up here to put in a different sort of picture to catch attention. Or I can pick a picture in that I can upload my own picture. So you can create whatever content you want and then um, <laughs> customize it a bit. And you have the ability to um, co color code it a little bit, but your own custom color is not available. You have to choose one of these 20 ones here. People that have you in circles automatically follow this collection. That's on by default, and that's how you can get those that follow your main account to then follow all of your collections. So if they follow you, your main account, they follow your collections. If you leave that on, if you leave it off, someone follows you, they don't automatically get the content of that collection. They have to manually go look at it or follow that collection. I recommend to leave it on just to get the most amount of people to see your collections. After you customize this, on, a, on the top right you can click Save. Yes? I had created a bunch of collections, but I didn't mean to make it public, so how do you hide it? I think once it's public, let me confirm here. Once it's public, I don't believe you can change it, but let me confirm. Uh, so that one I made public. I'm, uh, I can click on the collection here, then I get the menu of the collection, and from here I have edit and delete. Let me look at edit, visible to public, and it's, it's not clickable. So unfortunately, if it's public, it's public. It can't further be changed. The closest thing, unfortunately, is that I have to then delete the collection and do it again. The big problem with that though is once I've added stuff here, added stuff to my collection, and I delete collection, the stuff in the collection gets deleted too. So. Okay, great. Then what I would say is go ahead and delete it and then create it again and then change the sort of visibility instead of public to something else. So we can create as many collections as we want. Uh, we uh, can further edit the collection by going back to yours and then click. Then you get the menu there. Edit. Who are the followers of my collection? Delete the collection. Get some help about collections. If I click to delete, it will pop up. If you delete a collection, all of its posts will also get deleted. So if, you're, if I've been putting a lot of things into a collection, and I click that, it will delete. And that's why it tells us when we create the collection, this is, this is permanent. However you set it will stay like that. So once we know that downside, we should be okay. 
So once we've got a collection and we click the pencil, now I'm about to share something on Google+, but to a specific collection. If I made the collection public, anyone could see it. If someone searches for those keywords, someone could see it. If I made a collection private and shared something there, only the people of that collection could see it. And because I'm using collections that are public, which is what I recommend, possibly and most probably at some point, Google Plus is going to feature your collection. Notice here's another random assortment of collections. I don't know any what's the trick or the secret to get featured here. From my experience, it's simply creating a variety of collections, adding content to them often, and at some point Google Plus will then make your collection uh, featured and someone could follow. You build that audience. That's another way to get followers. Maybe not followers to your account, but maybe followers to a collection, and that might be better. We saw that one person had 11,000 followers to a collection, but only 100 on his main profile. Doesn't matter then. He's going to share more to his collection where he's got the larger audience. And the 1% then of, of uh, followers could further follow through. All right, so let's say you, uh, you go back to collections, and you look at yours, and you click on your collection. You should then see a pencil on the bottom right corner, and that'll give us that share screen like we saw before. It'll then just go to that collection. What I also have here from this screen is if I click this little uh, top left corner share icon, I can then share this collection. Copy the link to put it on an email, share the link directly to Facebook, share it to Twitter, share it on Google Plus. So to get more attention for, Matt, for that community, or that collection. Share and place the, your content in there. Yeah, the pencil. <clears throat> the pencil on the bottom right corner. And then whatever you share here, goes to the collection. That's in the collection. Can you um, share previous posts? You can. That's uh, when you go back to your profile. You've seen what you've shared. Notice whatever you've shared. It says it's in a collection. This one's not in a collection. So what I can do is click the kebab menu and then at the bottom move post to collection. So whatever you post you can move it to a collection. So I'll put that into my Down Under Recipes. So now what I've shared previously is in a collection. So collections are valuable. They're, they're relatively new to Google+. Plus. I think they've been around for about a year. Um, they're, they're pretty cool and straightforward. Um, last time I taught this, someone asked, okay, can other people share to my collection? Um, no. You created the collection, only you can share to the collection. Anyone else can see them, see your collections, and anyone else, when there's something on in a collection, people will be able to comment onto the collection but no one else can add something new to your collection. Just like when I'm looking at someone else's collection, I'm going to go look at Swap Needle's collection. I go look at his collection. I cannot add, I don't get the pencil, I cannot add anything to his collection, but I can look at his posts and then click the reply and say, amazing Photo. Thanks for sharing. So I can do that. I can comment on someone else's stuff. The reason I might want to do that is that now Sopnil becomes aware of me. He can then follow me. That's that tactic there. Instead of me following him, I can comment, I can plus one, I can share. He got the notification. Victor's Bakery commented on your post. Worst case scenario, he ignores it, moves on with his life. Best case scenario, I get one of those actions. 
plus one, comment, reply, follow. So you get what I give. And those little things have like a number of minutes or hours or days and stuff. Okay. Exactly. This this is, is the a way to make it post the date instead. Um, when you actually click on it, now it doesn't do it for their comments, but so this says two weeks ago. If you actually click on the time to show you the post, it does then say the day, not not not, not the time. But I don't see that for people's comments. So Lalita posted something one week ago, but I don't seem to be able to see exactly when a week ago. However, for everyone's post, you can click the time. I'm going to click back on the menu, and I'm going to go back to home. The last thing that we'll cover before we wrap up for the day is actually one of the things that I like most about Google+, Plus, even more than collections, which are communities. Collections are something that you create that other people can see, but not share to. Communities are something that you can create that everyone can contribute to. So let's take a look at communities for a moment. Go back to your menu and click Communities. Communities are like the old classic bulletin boards. Uh, they're a community, you know, for back and forth communication. Multiple people can join it and communicate, collaborate, etc. Communities. So if you click there, you will see Recommended, Member, and Yours. So as you use Google Plus. It'll learn more about you and it'll recommend. Okay, you seem to be all about baked goods. Here are some communities about baked goods you might be interested in. Once I start to join a community, so let's say I join Baking 101, you click join. So now it's going to be under members. I'm a member of that community. Me and 9,000 other people. And then I've got the Yours tab. I can create my own community. I do not recommend you create your own communities. I recommend you join established communities because creating your own community means now you've built some sort of like meeting space and therefore you need to get people to know about it, to join it, to contribute to it, and then you need to be a moderator. Now you need to delete the spam. You need to delete the off-topic stuff. You need to keep the spam bots out and the good people in. So I don't recommend you become that. I don't, be, I don't recommend you become a, a community moderator now because you've got enough to do. You've got to run your business, use some social media, don't become now also a community moderator, keeping out the spam and, and all of that stuff. So I, I, don't, I don't really recommend creating one. I recommend instead joining a community. The value of these communities is that various people congregate on a topic. It's suggested to me cake style, 3,800 people are here. Cake decorating, 22,000 people. Uh, cakes and bakes, sweets and treats, 73,000 people. So watch this. On any of these communities that I'm not a member of yet, I'm going to click the, the icon. It'll show me what's in the community. This one's got 73,000 73, people. All of this great stuff being shared. So 73,000 people, in theory, are seeing this stuff. I want 73,000 people to see my stuff. You will be able to reach those people once you've joined. Once you've joined, you will have the pencil to post. Notice on the community that I did join of Baking 101, pencil, I can share. What I post will go to this community once I've joined it, and up to 9,000 people could see it 
I have zero followers right now, but I could get my post visible right away now by 9,000 people. That doesn't mean you're going to make 9,000 sales. That's the 1% again. That could be 90, right? 90, 900, whatever it is. That could possibly be some amount of people better than zero. You have zero followers. Join communities and suddenly, in a sense, you suddenly have thousands of followers if you join communities and post to them. Notice these other ones that I have not joined, Platos Latinos, if I click on that, I don't see the pencil. I can't post there. Well, I'll click Join. Now I can post. I can reach 11,000 here. The catch is all of these communities are created by the users of Google+, not the official representatives of Google+, not the official Google company. People. Someone created this community. Someone on Google+, a business or a company created it. And therefore, the business or the company manages it, makes the rules for it, decides who can stay and who has to go. So again, like the classic message boards. So someone created this community. The Baking 101. And most communities on the left side have an about spot. So I do recommend join communities. But then I recommend, after that, read the rules. Read about the community and follow the rules. So in this community, guidelines, what to post, your baking and cooking photos. Links to these photos are welcome. Posts that are not relevant to the community will be removed. Same repeated posts will be removed to save space for other members' posts. Please post only your own stuff. So someone made these rules. Not Google, someone that created this community. And if you run afoul of these rules, uh, best case scenario, someone on the community tells you you made a mistake, please don't do it again. Worst case scenario, someone removes your post. Whatever you posted there now gets removed. Worst, worst case scenario, you get removed from the community. And you lose access to 9,000 people. Every community is different, run by different peoples of various levels of kindness or meanness, depending on the community. And so it behooves you, read the community rules and follow them. One community might be more uh, lenient and let you post as many things as you want. Another one might say, only post one thing per day. Whoops, I posted two things. The moderators that created this care about this, and therefore they're going to be watching it and looking at the good and the bad, and they're going to see, oh, I saw this post two times. Best case scenario, they click the delete button on your post. Worst case scenario, they click the delete button on you. And then you're out and you have very little uh, way to get back to the community. Uh, I've done it. I've contacted the people in Google Plus and said I was kicked out of the community. I was following the rules. Here's the proof, screenshots and such. And they said, sorry, we don't control communities. The moderators do. As long as the community in general follows the general rules of Google, we can't do anything about it. So I was in a community with, I don't know, 40,000 people, and I thought I was posting appropriate things, but I would then see that that particular moderator was run by one person. You can have multiple moderators, but this one person ran it like an iron with an iron fist. And I wasn't posting the kind of things that he liked specifically, even though they were they were on topic, I was removed. And all the screenshots and proofs that I showed to the Google moderators, help moderators, they said we can't do anything about it. So to not lose that audience, you know, I don't have 40,000 followers, I have about 1,000, but here I have right away 9,000, 20,000, 100,000, depends on the community. Just follow the rules of the community and stay on topic. So if I go back to communities and I click search and I, and I search for cookies, under communities, more, here's all of these cookie communities. 
cakes and baking, 719,000 people join. I now have access to 719,000 people. I'm going to read the community and follow the rules, and I'll be good. If I don't follow the, the rules, then I could kicked out, get kicked out, and then I have less people to, to reach. Let's see, are there any... Let's see this about community. Share and discover the most delicious recipes imaginable. We'll post a range of treats, but we love to see your own ideas and suggestions. <clears throat> That's way too much work. That looks tasty. Um, no one's going to cut avocado like that. That's not avocado, is it? That's not baking. I report them. Anyway, uh, that's uh, follow the rules of the community, post this good stuff, and then you can potentially reach this audience. Uh, everyone is everyone is different. Please note off-topic conversations, images, and such may be moderated. If posting images that you have found elsewhere, please copy and paste the source link. This is by the Cadbury Company. So those, those chocolate eggs. Uh, the Cadbury Company has this community. They're the moderator of it. They're in charge of it. As long as this is following the general rules of Google+, everything, everything, anything goes. So this is the big secret. This is the secret weapon for Google+. Communities. Search for communities under various topics. Join as many as you want. But the big thing about that is follow the rules. Stay within the rules, you'll be stay happy in the community, and you'll be able to reach an audience. A second rule that I would mention is also try to join communities with a good amount of people. This one right here, um, vegan recipes. Uh, it only has 142 members. This might be too small to have a viable community. So I wouldn't join that one. Uh, 11,000, that's a good amount. Six members? Nope. 1,400? Sounds like a good amount. Usually my rule of thumb is about 1,000 or more members. So you browse around, you join, read the rules, because some might say, do not cross-post. Let's say I joined three baking communities, and I posted the same thing to all three. That's cross-posting. You've cross posted across more than one community. The same picture to the three communities. And one of those communities says, no cross-posting. How are they going to know? Again, you've got these moderators that, have, that love to do this, and they're spending their time on Google Plus checking out everything and making the community good. So if someone then of a community finds out that you cross-posted, again, best case scenario is they delete your your post, worst case scenario, they remove you from the community. Sharing the same thing to multiple communities. Some communities don't like that, so always check the rules. Some communities might have the ask to join button. Most, most say uh, simply join. Some say ask to join. These, if you try to join, you won't get there automatically. One of the moderators will get a notification that says, Victor's Bakery wants to join your community. What the moderator will then do is go to your profile and see what you're all about. So if you have no picture, no about information, no posts, why would they let you join? You're a spammer. I believe you. You're not a spammer, but they're not going to believe you. So 
So that's why I'm saying five to ten posts, not really directed to anyone or, use, or, or maybe using collections. Content. You need content. Because then if you want to join one of these Ask to Join communities that could be very valuable, what if I am an Android programmer with an amazing game? I want to join this community of nearly a million people that could want my game, but I have to ask to join. So I should have stuff on my profile about gaming to be approved. So right here, weather photography. I love taking pictures of the weather. And I want to share with more people, nearly half a million people. But I have to basically have a portfolio. I have to ask to join. People will see it, and then they might approve. So like right here, what if I have a lot to say about Game of Thrones? I have to ask to join. like this one right away. Announcement. New members must ask to join. Blue heads not allowed. When you create a brand new Google Plus page, you might simply be a simple blue head icon. So they're oh. saying we're not going to let blue heads join. Over on Twitter, it's no eggs. Because when you're a brand new user on Twitter, you're an egg. And when you're a brand new user on Google+, Plus, you might be just a blue head. <laughs> so that, mean, that means you're not serious. You haven't even taken the time to put in a, a picture about your company or yourself or whatever. So over here on the Auto Awesome group, you're not awesome enough, so they won't let you join. So that's our, our general look at Google Plus for Business. It's a way to get an edge on your competition. Your competition perhaps doesn't have a presence on Google Plus. When you build a presence and you add content, you create this biography and such, you could show up when people search in Google or when people when people search in Google Plus or when people search in on Google Search, you know, these have these are Google Plus businesses. So once you've created a business here, you can get found more easily. So this person here, for example, sharing some financial services. 544,000 followers. And so that was our goal for today, Google Plus, why it's useful. You want to you want to um, use it as as much as possible and uh, be active with it. It's free and it's very valuable. Uh, as we wrap up on the syllabus, we've got more things that we're going to do next time. We've got the um, Let's see, next time we've got setting up YouTube and optimizing a video. So uh, if you don't have any video content to share to YouTube, that's okay. I can give you an example video. Um, or you can bring your own video of any length or quality, whatever. But the thing about YouTube is in order for us to use it effectively, we need a video. On Google+, Plus, we can share text, pictures, links, videos, whatever we want. On YouTube, we've got to share videos. So we'll talk about creating the YouTube account, how it links to your Google Plus account, how to upload videos, how to optimize to get views, 
and traffic because if you haven't thought about it, YouTube is another kind of social network. It has hundreds of millions of users. By one measurement, it's the second largest social network after Facebook. It has 900 million users. Facebook has a billion. And so Google, uh, YouTube is a Google property. They bought them in 2006 or something, 2012, sometime. They bought them and they've integrated it all. You get an Android phone, you have Gmail automatically, Google Plus automatically, YouTube automatically iPhone people, well, they, they want to get YouTube as well. Everyone wants YouTube. And you want it too because it's, for, it's a very good thing for business. We're not actually going to talk about how to create videos. That's a, a discussion for a different class, my social media class. Here we're going to talk about, do you have a video? How do you use YouTube effectively? That'll be next week. In two weeks, uh, we're going to do setting up Google Search Console and Google Analytics. This is the one to get the most out of that day. You need to have a, a, a website where, because we're going to link the Google Analytics and Google Search Console to the website. Well, those are our free services that let you track the traffic to your website. This is a lot of great data like the time of day that people most visit your site, what countries they came from, what languages did they speak, what pages were most popular. All of that data we can get from Google for free, but you need a website. If you don't have a website, you can of course still come to the class, learn this stuff, and apply it later. You will be able to create the account, but you won't be able to link it to your website. So I'm saying in two weeks, if you've got a website, bring your login information so that we can set it all up properly together uh, to get the most out of it. If you don't have a website, don't worry, you can still come. If you didn't bring your login information, no problem, you can do it at home. That's in two weeks. So if you have a free WordPress site, can you set up Google Analytics on that? On your free WordPress, you can set up Google Search Console, but not Analytics. Okay, yeah. And Analytics is better. So any general questions about what we talked about today or what we're going to talk about? Okay, so um, everything that I've talked about I've been recording in my videos. And remember, send me an email at some point. My email is right there on the syllabus. Send me an email requesting the advanced Google videos, and I'll send those off to you. Uh, we'll have a little lab time until 9.30 if you need some one-on-one -on -one help, and then we'll do it again next week.